Your browsing data could be tracked by login forms, Forever 21 got hacked, and Snowden releases his very own mobile security system. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for January 2nd, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Happy New Year! Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. This next goal opens up a special Q&A between me and all of our patrons, plus it helps me upgrade the set as well. And FYI, if you'll be in Las Vegas next week for CES 2018, I'll be having a meetup with my friends at Daily Tech News Show and Tech Thing, including Patrick Norton. It will be on Tuesday, January 9th at 8 p.m. at the Level Up Arcade and Bar in the MGM Grand. It's a brand new bar, so we're going to check it out. No sign up needed, just show up and hang out. And I'll put a link to the details below in the show notes. And now, onto the news. So John shared today's top story on Patreon. And by the way, if you are a patron over on Patreon, share your top story picks on the community tab of Patreon to be featured. In a post by Princeton Center for Information Technology Policy, researchers identified a new way for third-party scripts to exfiltrate a user's username or email information from a site by exploiting the browser's password manager. Now, many different browsers, very popular ones, including Firefox and Chrome, have a built-in tool to save passwords, usernames, credit card details, addresses so that you can ship to yourself, all sorts of information. These details are automatically filled upon visiting a site that matches the credentials. Now, this is a little bit different from third-party extensions like LastPass or 1Password. For the built-in browser tool, an attacker could use the tool to track a user's web traffic with a script built into the website without the user knowing. Though cross-site scripting attacks are common for built-in autofill tools, this one in particular is the first to use the tool not to steal password credentials, but to track a user's web traffic. In order for this to happen, the user chooses to save their login credentials for a website in the browser like normal. Then whenever they visit some page on the same domain, like for example, if they visit a subheader, the new page will include a third-party tracking script that is hidden, completely hidden from the user. And it turns out it's a login form. So the browser autofills it thinking that it's a login page. The email address is then hashed and sent to a third party server, potentially for advertising. Now of the top 1 million sites, 1,000 were using this type of hidden tracking. Since browsers do not require human interaction to autofill at least the username or email address, this attack works. The third party script, which is written in JavaScript, then saves that data and since a username or email address generally does not require any kind of change on a site, even clearing cookies or using incognito mode or switching to a new device will not prevent it from happening. While the data is hashed before sent, it is not necessarily anonymous since it is hashed via MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-256, and it is not salted. The two scripts are run by AdThink and OnAudience. Now, since the first party, which is the website owner, is embedding the code for a third party, the login form, then technically this is working as promised. But since the data is being used surreptitiously for something other than simply logging in, it creates a trust between the user and the third party that simply should not be there. Now, how can this be prevented? All right, so website owners can put login forms on a separate domain that pop up during the login. Third-party frameworks can also be isolated. Users can also install ad blockers or tracking protection and not use the built-in autofill options in the browser. Browsers could also force user interaction before autofill occurs. Now, if this happens, then the user would not be able to interact with the hidden login form because it is hidden. Given that most of our audience over here is male, you probably are not directly impacted by this breach, but a spouse, a friend, or a family member may have been or you if you have purchased a gift. For the women that watch my show, all 5% of us, listen up. Forever 21 announced last week that they were targeted in a hack from April 3rd all the way to November 18th, 2017, where point of sale systems in several different stores across the United States were infected with malware that stole credit card information from customers. Forever 21 did not announce how many customers were at risk, but they did explain that credit card numbers, expiration dates, verification codes, and some cardholder names were all stolen in the hack. 
back. Originally, Forever 21 announced an incident on November 14th, but did not know all of the details at that time. This is an update to that news, release with clear impact. Now, no cards were used on their online store that were affected, it was just in their stores. Forever 21 states that many point-of-sale devices did not have encryption enabled for some reason, which allows the malware to intercept unencrypted data from tracks on credit cards. Now, not all point-of-sale systems in the affected stores were breached, and the dates varied from store to store. Some were breached for weeks, some were breached for months, some were just a few days. Forever 21 did not name which stores were affected, but there is an ongoing investigation. Recently, Edward Snowden, who is most notable for his leaks of NSA documents several years ago, released a new Android application through his company called Freedom of the Press Foundation. The app, which is named Haven, is designed to be left in your hotel room as a mobile security system that should alert you of any kind of sound or movement while you are gone. I ended up tweeting about this, stating that I would use it on a burner phone as I would not be caught dead leaving my real phone unattended, to which Snowden himself himself replied, that is the essential idea. You install it on your unused phone as a spare set of eyes and it will send alerts to your real phone. Then the primary could be iOS or Android, it doesn't matter which. What's more important is Haven does not need an active plan as it can simply communicate over Wi-Fi or Ethernet with Tor or Signal. So thank you Snowden, I am probably on some kind of list now, if I wasn't already. And NSA, if you are listening, I would love it if my husband cleaned up the dishes when I get home from work today. It uses the cameras, the microphones, and the accelerometers to monitor for motion and disturbance in the room. It'll capture anything that happens, whether it's a maid cleaning or a lock picker entering your room or an NSA agent messing with your electronics. The picture or audio will be sent to your real phone over whichever text messaging you prefer. Now by using Signal, the data transferred is encrypted end to end if you choose Signal. A user can also configure it to work with Orbot which is a Tor app for Android. If you work with highly sensitive information, if you're a journalist, if you're an activist, or like me, you simply go to hacker cons, this could be deemed useful to you. Haven is free, it's open source, and it's currently available in the Google Play Store, and you can bet I will be doing a review on either Hack5 or Tech Thing. Thank you again to all of the wonderful people out there who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week. We are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment for the set, as well as open up that live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, you will get access to a bunch of extras on Patreon. We might even feature your adorable fur baby in an upcoming episode just like these ones. I love checking out your fur babies, so thank you so much for sending them in, patrons. Check out the perk levels below for Patreon, and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, that's totally cool too. You can hit that subscribe button, you can share this episode on your favorite social media page, and don't forget to check out my meetup in Las Vegas next week. Link in the show notes. With that, I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet. Happy New Year's.